What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to make this animation in Adobe After Effects. Dread Labs. So before we head into the video, I just wanted to let you know that this video is sponsored by AEJuice.com. AEJuice.com is a website that contains a lot of asset packs for motion designers and video editors. Using their packs and tools definitely saved me some time on commission work, so I highly recommend checking their website out. They're holding an early Black Friday sale right now, and the actual Black Friday sale starts this Friday. So check out the link down in the description so you don't miss out on any discounts. During the video, I will also be using some of their asset packs, such as the Neon Analog Glitch Shapes pack, plus the Radical Retro pack. So in this video, I wanted to show you how to create this subtle glow similar to a gradient map in Photoshop, but in After Effects. So let me just break down in layers what the animation is here. We have a analog noise texture, you can just turn off. Then we have the text, which is what we're gonna be working on today in the video. And then we have also a background pre-comp uh, where I layered a couple of the uh, assets from aejuice.com over each other. So let's start out with the background real quick. So in the background, we have the neon analog glitch shapes pack and we layered that on top of two tunnel visuals, which we can easily browse with the aejuice app. And if we want to layer something in here, we can just click and drag and drop it and now this will download while it's giving you a tip so that's a really nice touch of the ae juice plugin and once it's finished it'll open the folder for you and you can just drag and drop it in here and if you want to just uh, layer this on top of each other i would suggest uh, playing around with the blend modes uh, for example the difference blend mode can also get some pretty cool uh, and intense effects all right so you can change the hue and saturation with the hue saturation effect let's just rotate that just a little bit so that the visual turns sign a little bit and as you can see layering these on top of each other gets a pretty nice background effect one more thing that i want to let you know this video was not long enough and a quick tip on how to loop your own visuals so if you want to loop this go to right click time enable time remapping this now means that you can just drag this further out and hold alt or option on your keyboard while clicking on the stopwatch at the bottom left here and then just type loop out and it'll already be featured here and once that's happening every visual is looping all right, so let's get started and make this effect by ourselves. The first thing we gotta do is add in some text and the font I'm using is called Drug. And let's just center that. And the next thing we wanna do is go to Layer, New, Solid, and make a black solid. I'm gonna turn this into the background here. What we're going to do now is select both of these layers, the Dread Labs and the Black Solid layer, right click and then click on Pre-Compose. And if you don't know what Pre-Compose is, this basically makes a new composition, just how we did it with the background, and it's basically the same as a group in Photoshop. So we'll just call this Text Pre-Comp. And as you can see, this is now one layer and we can just access this layer if we double click on here. So now here you can see in the timeline menu there's a new composition open. Uh, basically with whatever we put into the pre-composition. Again, this is the same as with the background. So if we double click on the background, you can see all of the stock loop animations that we uh, just use for the background. First thing we wanna do is add a little bit of a glitch effect to this. And we're gonna do that with a displacement map. And if you don't know what the displacement map does, basically the displacement map changes pixels around your composition based on top of the light and dark values of another image. So for example, let's just grab the analog noise VHS here. If we play this, you can basically see that this is a lot of like changing light and dark pixels because essentially this thing is black and white. Let's uh, turn this invisible for now by clicking on the I button in the timeline and select our text pre-comp. And under the effects, let's just search for displacement map and drag that on top of our text composition. And as you can see, we now get this cool outline effect, but that's not really what we want. Basically, we've got to select our source and based on the source, it will displace. So under the displacement map layer, let's just click on analog noise VHS because that's the one that we just dragged in. And if we play this now, you can see that the noise is affecting the text edges. That's pretty much it, pretty cool. But the noise layer that we got from aejuice.com as well, uh, it's actually way too big because it's in 4K and I just have my composition in full HD. So what we can do about that is click on right click, pre-compose, and then just move everything into the new layer composition. And what we can do here is go and select the scale option by pressing S on the keyboard and turn the scale down to 50%. And as you can see, the noise in the main composition is also now just a small, little bit smaller. 
So if we turn this off again, you can see that this also affects the displacement map. So again, if you are a little bit confused on how displacement maps work, uh, you can basically see it a little bit better if we just uh, lower the opacity a little bit and if we zoom in you can really see that where the noise is white uh, the pixels get moved to the left and up and where it's darker they get cut out a little bit uh, again if you want to learn more about displacement maps i have a full tutorial on my channel it is about photoshop but it's essentially the same thing in after effects anyways let's turn off the noise again and now we have the glitchy text and what we're going to do is rename this to noise pre-comp so the cool part about this is that you can do this with a lot of different stock videos and luckily aejuice.com has a lot of digital noise uh, and cyberpunk transitions which will probably work really well for this. So one more time I'm just going to demonstrate it real quick without explaining it uh, with the digital noise 01 from the radical retro pack from aejuice.com. So let's just drag and drop this in and it automatically opens so let's just drag the digital noise in our composition and again let's pre-comp this. So we can scale it down. And we'll just make this layer invisible again. And then under the text pre-comp, let's just go to the effect controls and change the uh, displacement map layer to digital noise. And of course, this layer gives a completely different glitch vibe as we can see on the screen right now. So depending on what you want, I strongly recommend playing around with different layers to use displacement maps on. But now I'm going to go with this one because I actually like it better. So let's just rename this to Digital Noise Displacement Layer. All right, so the next thing is uh, let's just bring the background back because uh, we cannot really see it anymore. And the way we want to do that is by changing the blend mode to screen. So basically the screen removes all of the dark parts of the layer and if you remember we have a black solid here that we uh, used. Uh, I'm going to explain why I use the black solid in, to begin with in a minute. If you cannot see the blend modes here, right click here, go to columns and make sure that modes is checked on. All right, all right. So the next thing we're going to do is blur the text out a little bit because it's a little bit too sharp. So let's just click uh, to the effects and click on Gaussian blur. And we'll change the blurriness to about 5 pixels. As you can see, this creates a subtle glow looking effect. But if we zoom in, it just looks a little bit blurry. And this is actually where the gradient map effect comes in. And it's sadly not called the gradient map because it's just a little bit different. But if we search for toner in the effects panel and drag that on here. Basically with the toner, you can map different colors uh, to a light or dark value uh, in a layer. You can switch between duotone, tritone or pentone. So with a duo tone, basically you can just uh, have the colors where you can map it to. We're gonna go with Pentone because it gives us five colors to change. So the highlights will still keep it white. We zoom in here and we'll just turn off the background a little bit. You can see that there's like a brown glow and that's because we have like these colors set up. But let's just change these all to like a cyan color. Let's change the dark tones to a lower darker cyan and we'll keep the shadows black because if we would change the black to something else the whole layer would be blue and that's not what we want here we just want to have these edges uh, a little bit subtle and the more we blur this the more you're going to see this transition as you can see uh, actually we're going to change the blur to about 10 pixels maybe and let's just play what it looks like because yeah it looks pretty cool Let's just turn on the background again. And because we have the shadows turned to black, we can have this effect without uh, the background being you know, invisible. Finally, we're gonna add some more glow as well as some texture to make it look even more retro. So first let's press Control Alt Y or Command Option Y if you're on a Mac. We'll rename this adjustment layer to glow. And let's just search for the word glow in the effects panel and drag that on top of here. So essentially the glow uh, where you can change uh, the threshold which basically determines how light or dark the parts of the image should be where the glow effect will be applied. So the lower this goes, the more glow you'll get on the darker parts of the image. So I tend to put this pretty high, around 70% at least, so that only the lighter parts uh, will get the glow effect. And the glow radius is for how large the glow will be and the intensity will be how extreme the glow will be. And the intensity is always kind of hard in animations like this. So let's just lower this a little bit as well as the radius. So if we turn this off, let's see the difference. That's pretty much okay. 
And then finally, let's add some texture. So I'm gonna delete the old texture that we had and we're gonna browse the AE Juice one uh, just to check out some cool stuff. What you're looking for here, I'm looking in the Radical Retro Pack. Uh, essentially, uh, the analog noises here, they have this little bit of a green-ish vibe and that's what I really, really like because that gives a little bit of warmth to the animation and you'll see it in a second. So let's just use this one, we'll drag this in and let's just put this on top of everything and let's just scale it down so that it matches with the composition size. And if we turn the blend mode to add, as you can see, the whole composition, especially where it's black, it starts getting green now and that's something that you really want in these like retro looking uh, animations. So if we play this, it starts to really look, look retro if that makes sense. And looking back at it now, I would probably go back into a different displacement map Perhaps we can just find a more subtle one. Let's just go with the analog noise VHS03. So we'll just cut this and go to the displacement map layer and put this on top of there. We can just remove the old one. And this gives a more subtle effect, I think. Maybe a little bit too subtle. So what we can do is go back into this layer and add a curves. Uh, to add a little bit more contrast. So let's see what this looks like. And I'm gonna change, turn off the background real quick so we can, and the texture, so we can see what it does with the text. Oh, and I really like how this works. Um, so another thing that I didn't mention before is if we go back into the text pre-comp, we can also make the displacement effect a little bit more drastic by changing the maximum displacements. So if we turn this up, as you can see, the displacement gets like all over the place. So we can do is just remove the text to the middle of the composition. As you can see, yeah, the, the glitches are getting all over the place. It's really cool. Um, the way I'm going to do is I think I'm going to keep these around 30 pixels. It's actually pretty cool. Turn the background on again and the noise. And make sure that the text is actually in the middle of the composition. So, all right, guys, there you have it. A couple of techniques that I use to make cyberpunk glitchy retro animations. So one more time, a huge shout out to aejuice.com for sponsoring this video. Uh, they have a lot of cool assets to check out. And I still haven't found all of the assets that I really like yet because there's just so much to choose from. So I would definitely check out their everything bundle because there's so many assets in there. Probably going to get be set for commission work if you're going to use that for a very, very long time. If you want to check out aejuice.com, there's a link down in the description. So before we end the video, I just want to have a couple of words about the sponsorships in the videos lately because I've received some negative comments about them and I just wanted to clear the air a little bit. One thing I want to tell you is that I'm not a millionaire influencer. I actually do have to worry about where my source of income comes from. And since I'm doing Dreadlabs full time, giving you guys free videos every week uh, that takes a lot of time, you know, uh, coming up with the videos, writing the scripts, recording the videos, stuff like that. So essentially, uh, well, it takes a lot of time doing this. And in order to do that, I have to work on Dreadlabs full time. And I cannot do that with just the ad revenue income. So that's why I take sponsor videos from time to time. But I always make sure that it will be products or will be websites that you guys would actually be interested in, such as today's sponsor. So the reason I'm telling you this is some people were calling me a sellout in my last video where I used the sponsor. And I just wanted to tell you that it actually really helps me and my channel out. So if you uh, think I'm a sellout for just using a sponsored video, please consider that I'm actually doing this uh, just because that makes me be able to give you guys more videos. So yeah, I uh, just wanted to clear the air about that. Anyways, if you'd like to support the channel yourself, you can actually become a patron of mine. Also, a huge thank you to my patrons because thanks to them, I'm also able to maintain a reasonable source of income while doing Dreadlabs full time. Uh, as a thank you, you'll get access to all of the project files from my tutorials, a 15% discount on Dreadlabs.net, as well as an exclusive role on the Discord community server. If this is something you're interested in, there's a link down below. If you don't have the budget to support Dreadlabs, you can always just leave a like, a comment and subscribe if you haven't. With all of that out of the way, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.